Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain For You. So today's topic is going to be medical labels and imaging studies. So I'll get to that in a minute. For those who like the breathing, let's take a couple of nice deep breaths. Breathe in the peace and quiet. Exhale the noise and the static. Breathe in the bravery. Exhale the fear. Breathe in the clarity. Exhale the doubt. All right, so you know, I pay attention a lot to not only my Facebook group and my Facebook page, but a lot of the other TMS-based groups. I don't actually dig into some of the non-TMS um, pain worlds because they're not on board yet. They're not on the TMS train. They don't know what it is even. So I don't really want to comment on that. But let me just talk about the people in the TMS world. I get a lot of questions from people that say, my doctor told me I have this. Will your approach help me? Or my doctor told me I have that. I have this medical label. I have this neuralgia, that neuralgia. I've got this fibromyalgia. I've got bulging herniated discs. Will this fix that? Will this help me? Um, sometimes people are finding me on YouTube and they haven't really heard about TMS. They're going, well, this kind of sounds okay, but... I've got this medical diagnosis, which is some weird, you know, stuff with the spinal cord or whatever. And will this help me? And they'll say, but my MRI says this. My MRI says that. I've got x-rays that show degeneration. Will this help? How can this fix something that I'm seeing on the imaging study? So medical labels oftentimes are very scary. And guess what? Imaging studies equally scary. Why? Because holy crap, I can see it. There's the problem. So, when it comes to TMS, TMS is not going to fix structural problems. That's not the purpose of this approach. The purpose of this whole TMS mind-body world, too much stress world, is to recognize that the thing you are led to believe is the cause of the pain is not the cause of the pain. So the medical label that your doctor gave you, this diagnosis that they gave you, is just that. It's a medical label. It's their best guess based on your description of your symptoms. In some cases, it is based on an MRI, an X-ray, a CAT scan, or something to look at the physical body. But there's no actual proof that those things are the cause of the pain. It's just coincidental that it's a similar part of the body. And doctors can kind of correlate all sorts of imaging studies to all sorts of symptoms. But when you actually talk to a TMS doctor like Dr. Schubner or Dr. Clark or Dr. Hanscom, they'll go, yeah, but that doesn't make sense. That doesn't hold water because, you know, that bulge doesn't have anything to do with the 14 other symptoms that you've got. And so I will encourage you, if you have a medical label or medical diagnosis or an imaging study that says, here's the problem, I would say, okay, you've ruled out the life-threatening stuff, the catastrophic, the medical stuff that really does warrant a medical doctor-based treatment, infections, cancers, tumors, strokes, heart disease, those things warrant medical intervention. But if you've ruled that stuff out and you've just are left with a medical diagnosis for the supposed reason for your pain, let's kind of um, put that on hold for a moment and then let's see if we can rule in this mind-body syndrome, this stress-induced illness, or as Dr. Schubner is now calling it, neural circuit pain. Uh, Alan Gordon calls it neuroplastic pain. And basically what that means is pain that the brain is creating. Right? So let's rule that in. My, um, my pain test 
Go to yourpaintest.com. Any score over 29 out of 50 is TMS. What that means is whatever your doctors have told you is probably not the cause of the pain. It's TMS. It's this mind-body syndrome, stress illness. It's learned neuropathic pain. You can also go to ppdassociation.org forward slash symptoms. There's 30 questions there. And that will be very helpful. The more questions you answer yes to, the more likely it is that you've got TMS, this mind-body syndrome, too much stress caused pain, and not some structural abnormality. And the last assessment is at painfreeyou.com. Now that's not a scored thing, but it's about an 11-page document where I'm going to encourage you to evaluate your pain history. What symptoms have you had throughout your lifetime? And do they correlate to any stressful times or stressful events? And inevitably, you're going to start to see, wow, I had like stomach pains in middle school and headaches in high school. And I had uh, some knee pain in college and back pain when I had my first kid. And, and, and many of us, not all of us, many of us will have a lifetime or a history of symptoms that we can kind of align to stressful life events, stressful times. And that's not curative by itself, but it will at least help you connect the dots and start to go, ah, so I've got a history of this stuff. It's not just now. It may have been throughout most of my life. That self-assessment also allows you to determine what you believe about yourself or what your self-judgments are if you feel certain emotions. So that's in there. And so you can download at painfreeyou.com the self-assessment. No, by the way, um, there's a document called 11 Mistakes That Keep You in Pain. And what you will invariably find is, well, first of all, those came from all the mistakes I made over my 13-year journey with chronic pain. But they're also very common. And what you may find is that if you're still in pain, you're probably doing one or several, or many, or all of them. And so, rule out the life-threatening. I'm assuming since you're here, you've already done that. There's no infectious disease, there's no stroke, there's no cancers, no tumors, right? Rule that stuff out. All the stuff in the middle, which is the medical labels and the medical diagnoses and the imaging studies that say, there's this, there's that, you can see it on a study. Set that aside for right now because you know you're not dying and there's no harm in now trying to see are my symptoms behaving more like stress illness, too much stress, TMS, than they are physical structural issues. Those assessments will do that for you. So please take the time to do that. Those assessments are generally listed in the description of my videos where at minimum if you're on Facebook, Go to the Facebook private group for Pain For You. And the announcement at the top, read through it. These assessments are in there. So, rule out the life-threatening. Rule in TMS. And if it's TMS, it's TMS. That means you can fix it. That means great news. It's the best news ever. It means there's an answer. And you're not stuck with chronic pain. So, what do you guys think? Are you hanging on to these medical labels like a badge of honor? But Dan, you don't understand. I've been told I have this, this, and that. And honestly, I've been doing this stuff a long time. 24 years since I started paying attention to pain because I was in it. I will get people hitting me up with medical diagnoses and medical labels. Many of them that I have to Google. Never heard of that one before. Never heard of that one before. And over time, I'm learning more and more of these medical diagnoses. But as we do the analysis and look at the pain tests and do the assessments, invariably, these are all just medical labels that are coming right out of, you know, the medical school textbook that says, if symptom this, then put this label on it. Personally, I think that's more to do with insurance codes and recommended medical treatments than it is the actual cause of pain. 
And so I love doctors. If I get really broken up in a car accident or have a heart attack or a stroke or cancer, I'm going to the doctor. But everything else, not everything, but most other things, if it's TMS, it's TMS, and I'm going to treat it with the TMS approach, which is basically teaching the brain that the imaging study and those medical labels don't matter. They're not helpful. And we can kind of set those on the, on the shelf and say, I'm going to focus here on this TMS approach. Because there's no downside to a TMS approach that's geared towards teaching your brain that you're safe in your body, you're safe in your emotions, you're safe in your thoughts, and that your body's already okay. There's no downside to that. No downside in calming down and relaxing and breathing and feeling your emotions and calming down your thinking. There's no downside. So, you can get better. If you've been given some scary, official, authoritative sounding medical labels, or you've seen some really weird stuff on your medical imaging studies, if they're not life-threatening or catastrophic, set them aside. Rule in TMS, and if it's TMS, beautiful. You're in the, in the right place. You can get better. So what do you guys think? Is this helpful? I hope so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this one up. It's almost 9 o'clock here on a Thursday night, so you're watching this probably on Friday. Love you guys and gals. Hope you found this useful, and we'll talk to you soon.